Every microorganism that you're about to see in this video came from rainwater. Welcome everyone to Fantastic Microbes and Where to Find Them. If this is your first time, my name is Jordan and I like to travel around collecting microbes from all over the place. In today's episode, however, the microbes are coming to us from the skies, traveling from 10,000 feet uh, to the ground and they may have been traveling for miles, who knows how far. Now, we've known for years that microbes can be found in rainwater. In fact, the inventor of the microscope, Antony van Leeuwenhoek, was the first to discover this way back in 1675. He had left a brand new pot out in the open and, and it collected rainwater and he let it sit for a couple of days and found a ton of things swimming around. I've tried recreating this experiment for myself three separate times and every time I was met with failure. I would leave a jar or a bowl out and then it would normally dry up. Uh, I live in a very dry place and I'm normally left with a bunch of dust like this so I knew that there was stuff to be collected, I just needed the right way to do it. What I realized is that we needed something with a larger surface area to collect the water. So we had this unopened kiddie pool that I got and I put it upside down to kind of let everything slope towards the middle and I let it rain for about two hours and I had enough dirt here and debris that I collected in this jar. Now I decided to give the microbes some time and let the jar kind of settle for about 12 hours and this is what I was left with. A bunch of dirt, debris, and lots of microbes swimming around. Now I'm going to go one by one and kind of explain the common microbes that I found in this sample. Now in this video uh, you're seeing about five or six milliliters of rainwater and I saw about four maybe five uh, types of microorganisms. So let's start off with this one here. This is a vorticella and vorticella are really cool because they have a, a long stalk that they use to hold on to debris and then they have special hairs called cilia which uh, they use to stir food and uh, like bacteria and debris towards them for feeding. Uh, these guys are pretty common around the world um, in fact you know since they've they've been found in the fossil record up to 200 million years so they've probably been traveling by rain for that long and if not longer. And so pretty cool to see those guys. Next up, we have what looks kind of like a paramecium. Now, paramecium, you've probably heard about in, uh, you know, biology classes and stuff like that. Uh, they're long oval shaped and they have hairs all over them that called cilia that they use to swim around. But these guys are a little bit different. Uh, I believe these are called spirotrix. And what makes them different is that most, if not all of their hairs are on the uh, ventral side or the front side of, or ground side of their body. And they, instead of using their hairs for just swimming, they use them for crawling around. So here's a closer look at one of those spiral tricks. You can kind of see it crawling across the glass slide here. And I was kind of having a hard time keeping up with it. You know, when I'm zoomed in at the closest magnification, uh, these guys can really leave the screen pretty quickly. So uh, this one was really nice for me though and was moving pretty slowly. Uh, but most of my stuff that I really like to look at though is, is in the dark field. And so here is some more footage of the spiro tricks moving around. Now, there was a microorganism that I wasn't able to identify, uh, mainly because it was pretty damaged. Um, this one is almost cut in half, and you can see a lot of guts that are kind of following it as it swims along. Uh, it reminded me of Nearly Headless Nick, and in honor of it, I think we should name him uh, Nearly Cellless Ciliate. Uh, but yeah, so that's it for the uh, larger ciliates. Let's go ahead and look in on some things that are a little bit smaller. So these guys are probably in the same uh, family or group as the Spirotrix. They might even be a different kind of Spirotrix, but just like a different subspecies, uh, but I'm not sure. Uh, essentially, they have a very similar uh, shape, and uh, they have most of their cilia underneath their body that they use to kind of swim, but also crawl around. And there were a bunch of them that I found on what looks to be like a small dead uh, piece of grass. And so I thought this was pretty interesting, so I decided to zoom in, and this is what we see here. They and this was really interesting because it looked like these guys were crawling inside and outside of this little uh, blade of grass, or this little plant-like thing. Uh, it also seemed like there was some uh, fungus growing on this as well. 
And so there's another species for you traveling by rain. Now, this is the last thing I wanted to share with you guys about uh, these single-celled uh, protists. So we have a pair of ciliates here that seem to be connected somehow. Now, this is part of the reproductive cycle for these organisms, but I'm not sure exactly which part. Um, it could be that they're just finishing uh, their binary fission, which is how these guys reproduce. They, they reproduce asexually. Uh, but there is this other thing that ciliates can do um, called conjugation, which is where they share genetic material with each other uh, through a small little uh, uh, organelle or device called a uh, sexual pilus, which, uh, you know, that one sticks into the other uh, and just sends the DNA straight through. Um, so that is really interesting to see, you know, how quickly these guys, you know, were able to start this process right after falling from the skies. Now, as just one last honorable mention, these are some uh, bits of bacteria that you can see under the microscope. I saw a bunch of these as well, uh, but they were too small. I need to get a larger objective lens to see these guys up close. Uh, but, you know, bacteria, these are the OGs. They've been around bacteria and archaea for the longest time, and they've probably been traveling by this rain for about 3 billion 700 million years. So, uh, yeah, there's my experience with looking at rain under the microscope. I think I've found a successful way to do this, and I'm going to keep it up, and every time it rains, I'll probably collect a little bit more. So thank you guys for watching, and uh, see you next time.